நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் ப்ராட் யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த தமிழ் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அவர் ரெனோண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி those who want to have a look at the tamil video please check the description box we have given the tamil video link this is astrologer deepa and i'm presenting you the english version of the tamil video in my last video i explained the subhatva of the 8th house with the natal chart of a v vip in this video i'm going to continue explaining the subhatva of other houses with the very same natal chart let me start with venus the fifth house lord is in the eighth house to the ascendant and in addition to this it is combusted and retrograde if a planet is combusted or retrograde many people starts to worry please don't worry about it even in this natal chart i want to prove that you don't need to worry about a planet which is combusted or retrograde but when it is subhatva it is good when a malafic attains sukshma strength or subhatva of a planet can rectify the combustion or even grahan dosha debilitation position in the enemical house position in 6th or 8th or 12th house I often reiterate these points in my videos. You can take a look at the Navamsha chart that is displayed on the screen. When you are checking the subhatva of the planet, you have to definitely check Navamsha as well. In order to check the intensity of subhatva, definitely you have to check Navamsha. So though we can identify subhatva of the planet in rashi chart it is necessary to check navamsha chart as well hope you can see the navamsha chart in navamsha the person is a gemini ascendant in virgo jupiter and saturn reside even in navamsha the ascendant lord saturn is subhatva with the conjunction of jupiter saturn is in its very friendly house which is virgo and in the house of taurus rahu is subhatva whose house lord is venus in scorpio sun and venus reside here in navamsha only venus is bit weak indeed sun is in its friendly house and in capricorn mercury is alone in its friendly house and in the house of jupiter mars resides and in the house of mars ketu resides and moon is finally in an exalted position in taurus indeed i say there is no own house or exaltation status in navamsha i will explain this concept in another video Moon is in the house of Venus which is a natural benefic. This person has a good planetary position of all the planets in Navamsha as well as Rashi chart. Having said all these if you check his natal Rashi chart the ascendant lord is in connection with Jupiter and though the 5th house lord Venus is in the 8th house to the ascendant it has the aspect of full moon and eighth house is also subhatva the ninth house lord mercury is exalted and it is in conjunction with eleventh house lord mars and both the ninth house lord and eleventh house lord are under the aspect of jupiter therefore throughout his lifetime he had a persistent financial life he had a stable financial status throughout his life as i already said the native is co-father in law of a very famous politician who made a huge revolution 
in Tamil Nadu politics. Of course, his co-father-in-law is no more in this world. In his Rashi chart, you can see the second house is highly Subhatva. The ascendant lord is under the aspect of Jupiter. And in the second house, Aquarius, you can see the highly Subhatva Purnima moon, which is full moon. And the third house, Pisces, is also highly Subhatva, which is the house of Jupiter. And Jupiter resides in its own house, Pisces. The fourth house, Lord Mars, is under the aspect of Jupiter. And it is in the sixth house to its own house, Aries. However, the dispositor of Mars, that is the house lord where Mars resides, gets exalted and both the planets are under the aspect of Jupiter. So in his natal chart, the ascendant lord is under the aspect of Jupiter and has gained Subhatva, whereas the ascendant house did not gain any Subhatva. The second house has the full moon and makes the second house Subhatva. And in the third house you can definitely see the natural benefic residing in its own house which is Jupiter. And the fourth house Lord Mars though as per Bhavad Bhavam, it is in the sixth house to its own house Aries. It has the aspect of Jupiter and it resides in the house whose house lord is exalted. The fifth house lord resides under the aspect of Purnima, though it is in the eighth house to the ascendant house. And now, looking at the sixth house, I always reiterate a point that Rahu and Ketu should be in 612 axis. So Rahu is alone, so it gives a life to the nature in such a way where there are no enemies, no deaths, no diseases. His life is without enemies, deaths, diseases. Here the Lord of 6th house Mercury is exalted, but it is in the ninth house to the ascendant. You have to make predictions like Mercury is strong in the quadrant house, to the 6th house. But it resides in Virgo as ninth house lord which is exalted. If it was residing in Gemini, it would have its own house status. And now it does not have any connection with the 6th house. A planet that has two own houses will do 80% of one of its houses to which it is more connected and it will do 20% of the house effects to which it is not connected. I have explained already in many videos how a planet will deliver the house effects when it has got two own houses. Therefore, here Mercury is exalted as ninth house lord and in conjunction with Mars under the aspect of Jupiter. And Mercury is not residing in the 6th house. For the native of Capricorn Ascendant, if Mercury resides in 12th house to the Ascendant house, it will strengthen the 6th house through its aspect. If this happens, as soon as Mercury Dasha starts, there will be a lot of deaths and problems with diseases. In that case, when Mercury resides in Sagittarius, it strengthens sixth house and gets connected more to the sixth house and therefore, as a result, it will deliver a lot of deaths and diseases. In this situation, Mercury will act more like a sixth house lord. Well, now let us check the seventh house lord, which is moon. As per Bhavad Bhavam, Moon is in the 8th house to its own house. However, it is Purnima with lot of light energy. I already mentioned that this native has got a very good wife. The natural significator of bed pleasures, 
which is Venus got combusted and retrograde. However, it is under the aspect of Jupiter. Here comes my point of Subhatua. Now let us see the Lord of the 7th house which is Moon. The 7th house Lord itself is a natural benefic. It is full Moon. It is heading very very closely towards Purnima. And the 7th house is indeed aspected by Jupiter. And you could have noticed that the 6th house has not any Subhatua at all. In the natal chart of this person, the houses which should be Subhatva remain Subhatva and the houses which are not supposed to be Subhatva, indeed the houses which have to be Pabhatva, remains Pabhatva. If the sixth house is Subhatva or extremely Subhatva, then the person will spend their life in pain, deaths and suffering from diseases. So the 6th house is totally spoiled by Rahu in this natal chart. This proves that the native of this Capricorn ascendant lives a contented and a complete life. I will even publish videos of the person who spends all his life paying debts and loans. Maybe if I get the natal chart of Vijay Malaya, then definitely I will explain it. He lived such a luxurious life, but he absconded as he could not pay the loans. And there are many big stars like him. I will definitely publish the natal charts of such people who absconded because of the debts in order to explain the Subhatva of the 6th house. This video is totally dedicated to explaining the Subhatva of the 8th house. The 6th house is totally spoiled in his natal chart because of Rahu. Rahu has weakened the 6th house by its presence and there is no aspect of any other planet to the 6th house. This is the reason why he still stays healthy though he got affected by Corona recently. He was admitted to the hospital for 20 days and he got discharged from the hospital and is perfectly alright in the house now. Hope you understand the effect of 6th house when Rahu resides in it. I hope now you understand how the 6th house will help the native to live a healthy life. I have already mentioned about the 7th Bhava. This is Subhatva. Now let me explain the 8th house. The 8th Bhava receives the aspect of the full moon which is equal to the auspiciousness of Jupiter. And Venus also resides in 8th Bhava and is still alive due to this. The 8th house Lord which is Sun itself is Subhatva by the conjunction of Venus and the aspect of the moon which is very very close to Purnima. Now let me explain the ninth bhava. The ninth bhava receives the aspect of Jupiter, which is in its own house Pisces. In addition to this, the ninth house Lord, that is Mercury, is exalted in the ninth house Virgo. The ninth house indicates house of luck. In his natal chart, the ninth house is aspected by Jupiter. And the ninth house lord is also exalted. This gives completeness to the life of the native. The native is very very dharmic. His father and his grandfather have such a great reputation in this society. I always reiterate a point that when a person is born during Purnima and Leo is strong and ninth house is very good, then the native's father will definitely have a good reputation in the society. Even the grandfather will be famous in the society. Needless to say, this old man's father and grandfather are famous in their native place. Now let us come to the 10th house. The 10th house lord is Venus and the 10th house lord resides in the 8th house to the ascendant. 
However, to compensate this, Venus is aspected by the moon which has good light energy. And there is no connection between Mars and Saturn in the 10th house. Though the 10th house lord resides in the 8th house, it receives the light energy of the moon which is heading very very closely towards full moon and there is no malefic connection with the 10th house such as Saturn or Mars. This is the reason why he had a persistent profession till 65 or 70 years of age and only for the past 20 years upon the suggestion of their sons he stays in the house without doing any professional work. His children suggested that he spend the rest of his life doing what he wishes to do in life. What would he wish to do in his life? He is a native of Capricorn Ascendant and Jupiter Aspects Ascendant Lord Saturn. So here there is a combination of Saturn and Jupiter and he likes to worship God, he loves to go to temples and he likes to spend his time in prayers. If in one's natal chart Jupiter is strong, the children will be of very good status. In a natal chart, the fifth house, the fifth house lot, Jupiter should be strong to have good children. Both the sons are at their father's beck and call. They always request their father to approve each and every idea before executing it. Though father is not sometimes really aware of the nature of the task, the father notes yes. And only after the father notes yes, the sons plunge in executing the plan. And more importantly, this family lives as a joint family even until this year. This is a very remarkable feature. And only this old man approves the commencement of a task and responsible for the final decision of every event in the life of their family members. Both the sons have great esteem for their father and great love for their father. The sons themselves are more than 60 years old. They do have grandchildren now. Though they are grandfathers to their grandchildren, still they request their father for advice before taking any decision. They respect their father a lot. The reasons for this attitude is Purnima Yoga, Subhatva of the Sun and the aspect of Jupiter on Venus. I would like to explain how an extreme Subhatva of the planets will work and definitely in the future I will explain natal charts regarding Pabhatva of the planets. Jyotish is a coin that has both phases. It is a combination of positive and negative events. Definitely I will explain such charts in the future. Okay, the 10th house is highly Subhatva. Now let us see the 11th house. The 11th house is aspected by Jupiter. The 11th house signifies the house of gains. The 11th house lord that is Mars which is lord of the 11th house Scorpio is aspected by Jupiter from its own house Pisces. Both the 11th house and the 11th house Lord Mars are aspected by Jupiter. Now let us see the 12th house. The 12th house Lord is Jupiter and resides in the quadrant house to its own house Sagittarius. Rahu is in the 6th house and Ketu resides in the 12th house. What does the 12th house signify? It signifies travel abroad and expenses. If the 8th house is Subhatva, then it gives good longevity. When the 12th house is Subhatva, to a certain extent, it is good. If only one spends money, they will get some comfort. If you have to buy a luxurious car, then you definitely have to spend some money. 
If you don't spend money, he lives a simple life because the 12th house has Ketu in it and it gets aspected by Mars and 12th house is not Subhatwa. The Lord of 11th house Mars from the 9th house, that is Virgo, aspects the 12th house. So this native does not spend much. In case the 12th house is Subhatwa, in this natal chart, then the native would be a spendthrift. He will spend a lot. When the 12th house is Subhatwa and the 12th house Lord is strong, that is when Jupiter is strong, definitely the more he spends, he will also gain a lot. But there is no such planetary combination in his natal chart. I know him very closely, very, very closely. He is a very close acquaintance to me. He does not spend much and he hesitates to spend money. In general, people of those days, that is people of previous generation who have crossed 80 or 90 years of age, do not spend a lot as we do now. They think a lot before spending the money, like whether it has a purpose or not. This person is not an exception. This is a perfect example of Subhatva of the Karaka of the planet and Subhatva of the Bhava and this is a natal chart of a person who is still living, whose planetary position explains perfectly Subhatva and Pabhatva. How beautifully Vedic astrology renders a lot of information. You can clearly understand from his natal chart Subhatva of the Karaka of the planets and the Bhava. And you would have got an idea about how Navamsha works. Not all have a beautiful planet combination like this. This natal chart is like one in thousands of people who are born in this world. Even it will be one among 10,000 or why not even one among 1 lakh people. How many people who have crossed 90 years of age or living such a healthy life with great respect and reputation in society and more importantly in family? Not even one in thousand will have this blessing. One in one lakh people or ten lakh people will have such a fortunate life and this elderly man is one among them. He has got a great reputation in society and a great family background. He is the co-father-in-law of a person who has changed the direction of the Tamil Nadu politics. This is the reason it attracts attention. I would like to add one more point here. He does not prefer to advertise himself. He and all his family members or very very modest when they communicate with the people in the society they do not disclose their family background they are very modest to such a great extent I hope now you understand Subhatva of the Bhava and the Karaka of the planet and this natal chart is especially indicating the Subhatva of the 8th house Though I am titling this video as 8th house Subhatva, in this natal chart all the Bhava or Subhatva, indeed all the planets or Subhatva in the natal chart. The very important point that I would like to convey in this video is, don't worry about the retrograde planets in your natal chart. You see whether it has Subhatva connection. You see whether it has the connection of any natural benefits. I have seen many, many natal charts and I strongly suggest that when retrograde planets or Subhatva, it is a great antidote for them. Subhatva of the planet is an antidote for the combustion of the planet as well. This is the perfect example of how a person lives a complete life when the planets and the Bhava or Subhatva. In my next video, I am going to explain about Mars as an introductory video before explaining the effects of Mars in 12 different houses for the native of Aries Ascendant. 
Well, this is question time. What are the factors that you have to check in order to know the longevity of a person? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. And in description box, we have given the playlist link of all the English videos so far published. And thanks for emailing to us regularly with suggestions and feedback. Please keep writing to us astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.